And welcome back to Who Would Win. Back to Who Would Win. Uh, and it's the week of Who Would Wins. We're continuing on with our week of Who Would Wins. I am repeating myself a lot. Uh, and we're continuing off with the monthly theme to Who Would Wins every month. Uh, I have a theme of Who I have a theme to Who Would Win. And I've still got plenty of our subjects for a theme to Who Would Wins later to go down the road with. But um, I, so I, with, I usually start the month with one and end the month during the week of Who Would Wins with two. Two of them to speed things up. So you should get through three a month. This this uh, topic, it's not necessarily the monthly. It's per how yeah. It, it's technically a monthly subject. I just realized that it's technically a monthly subject. But I choose the subject no matter how many it is, and I do a certain amount a month that are guaranteed to be in the month. That's I guess the better way to put. It. Anyway, the Planeswalkers of Magic Gathering. If you've never played the card game Magic Gathering, I suggest if you like fantasy and card games, try it. Um, but there's an expansive lore, a lot of history, and there are basically an infinite amount of worlds that exist within Magic the Gathering, planes of existence. Characters who can move between them are planeswalkers. The one we are on now is known as Nahiri. Now, Nahiri is a core. A core is essentially... See, cores are, I believe, a species that were developed for, or a race developed for the game Magic Gathering, and we keep getting new uh, races added in. Technically speaking, I'm sure something like them exists in D&D. They are kind of... More or less a, a negative version of a drow. They're not. They are. They look. They do have pointed ears. They're b pretty much human looking, but they're all white skin. They all have white skin. Males even have like kind of uh, tendril beards a little bit, but they're all. Uh, they look more or less human. Nahiri is a core, and she is known as a lithomancer. A lithomancer is a individual who uses magic to manipulate stone in many different ways. Uh, her bread and butter uh, technique is to create weapons from stone and is very skilled in combat. But she can also merge people in the stone, seal them in stone, create hedrons, which was used to imprison Cthulhu-esque beings. Uh, manipulate stone, just throwing stone, causing buildings to explode. She's highly proficient, and she's also a pretty volatile character in terms of her emotions, particularly if she's felt betrayed. So, when Finding someone to put against her, I had to think, who is, I can't use a, like a geomancer of any kind. I can't use any sort of earth manipulator because any earth manipulator I can think of would pretty much own her in a fight. Hell, even Gara would probably dominate her more or less uh, just because he's got extra abilities besides just his sand. Uh, Toph would obliterate her, Terra would obliterate her. <clears throat> so I'm like, who could I throw at her? Uh, and I'm like, well, why don't I go the other way? What about, because she, or her bread and butter technique is to use weapons, is to create weapons, particularly swords, and use them. So, how about a weapon creator? Someone who can just summon weapons from nowhere. And then I'm like, okay, and I'm thinking, uh, and I'm, let's go Urza, Urza Scarlet. Now, I don't think I've personally done Urza on one of my, uh, videos before. I did do the prediction against her and Zoro from One Piece for, uh, Death Bow, but I've never had done a prediction or a, done a who would win with her. Now, I'm not going to go reading off the list of her abilities again, because that took me forever to get through. But Urza is a member of the Fairy Tale Guild. She's one of the strongest members. She is a uh, she has equipped magic, equipped armor, and equipped sword magic. Basically, she has a spatial dimension, a pocket of dimension, that she pretty much pulls armor and swords out of. Most of her weapons, her swords, are standard swords. She can enhance them with magical energy and produce like energy blasts. Most of her armor gives... There's only a couple forms of armor that really give any sort of heightened abilities. Uh, there is the adamantine armor, which is her strongest defensive armor. Uh, it's not impervious, and, like invincible though, but it's extremely powerful, able to like uh, stop cannon fire, things along those lines. Uh, energy blasts. It can be broken, but ultimately uh, she can survive it. There's, I think it's like a dragon something armor. Basically, it's fire resistant and fire produces fire magic. There's also a wind equivalent of it. A water equivalent of it, and she even has a water blade, a sword made of water with that form. Uh, she's got several that allow her flight. The Adamantine armor allows limited flight. There are others that allow more flight. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's like some sort of... Oof. I can't remember the name of the armor. I could easily get it up if I really wanted to try, but I'd be stalling. Um, but it basically, she looks like a freaking angel made of swords is what it is. Um, and there's uh, end, uh, end of Fairy Tale or something like that. Or goodbye fairy tale armor, or something like uh, something along those lines. It's got a lance with it. Uh, one of them is uh, allows her to absorb power from celestial bodies like stars and use that energy. But yes, the Urza is 
highly skilled, highly proficient in armed, armed and unarmed combat. Uh, she is a master swordsman. She has a uh, false eye. Well, fa false eye. Her, she, one of her eyes is fake and is a ca capable of seeing through illusions. Won't matter in this case. Uh, she has a synthetic horse, which probably won't matter in this case as well. She also has a warhammer she can use. Uh, she's pretty cold, but it's not because she's actually unfeeling. It's just because she's very cut off and reserved from the rest of the world due to a troubled past. Uh, Urza, though, is also very, uh, is headstrong and, you know, confident in her own abilities to the point where she might not ask for help. Um, and she can get in, get in over her head. She isn't, uh, with, she isn't capable of, not capable, she is a bit overconfident in her ability. Like, she feels she can push herself beyond her limits if she has to, but that doesn't always result in a win. So, again, let's say, after, let's say this takes place after the um, Shadows Over Innistrad uh, story arc. Spoiler for those of you who don't know what that is. Essentially, she brought more or less the magic equivalent of Cthulhu to, the, to a plane to destroy it as revenge against someone. And then she, like, and then she fucked off. So, let's say she goes to the fairy tale world. And, you know, she's busy walking around and people, you know, are, like, marling at her. But in the fairy tale world, there are, like, midgets, giants, monsters. I'm so really... So a chick with white skin is not going to be shocking anyone, really, ultimately. They're going to assume she's a magic user, but, yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah, they, she would be a magic user. And, uh, you know, let's say one thing uh, one thing uh, leads to another, and she ends up in the fairy tale guild, and she thinks it's a bar or something along those lines, but she realizes it's a guild of wizards, and she, maybe she e ends up effing up a couple of them, and literally leads to Urza basically, like, saying and telling her to get out. And it's like, uh, and then she's just like, make me. And then, you know, the fight breaks down. She immediately, like, uh, Arza immediately just, um, Urza, uh, Nahiri immediately just throws some stone at her and immediately forces a sword out of stone and just comes at her. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, brings this blade down. And they're clashing with blades for a while. Urza's gonna be the more skilled swords. Uh, even though Nahiri is a couple thousand years old, probably, she has probably has more experience, but in terms of sheer skill, Urza's the more skilled. I'd have to say that. Though, again, Nahiri's got far... Even if she's only a couple hundred years old, she's got far more experience. Um, so, you know, she's going to clash down. They're maybe going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for a while. Nahiri, though, again, being a lot older and having a lot more experience, had, it, um, would know uh, when she's outmatched in, the, in certain forms of combat and... Now, uh, Urza would immediately put on, a, I'm going to go with Cult the Blade Angel on that armor and start throwing swords at her. But she's throwing stone up and just blocking him. And uh, again, uh, Urza realizes she just would be a stone magic user. And then starts throwing like sh like spikes of stones out of the big boulder she like, threw up. And then just, you know, she's trying to avoid them. And the stones, surprisingly, are hard enough that while they're not truly damaging her, she can feel the blunt force trauma on the armor. And she realizes that. She's not careful. The armor will give, so she'll have to choose her armor carefully in this. So she instead uh, switches over to maybe the water armor. U uses the uh, her and the, the water armor and her. You know, she's water resistant. All that does have some water magic capabilities, but the water sword is the really thing that really um, play a factor here because the water crashed against the stone. Nothing really happens. Uh, uh, Nahiri it falls to the back. You know, does that crouch thing and just summons like a, a couple construct monsters of stone and they go at him, go at her. And, you know, she immediately cuts through them with water, and, she, and here comes again with her blade to get a lucky shot in, but she holds the blade up with the water, and the water just cuts through the blade. Now here he's just shocked by seeing this, like, what? and then she just gets out of the way. Then she's using some sword dance match, just throwing blades at Nahiri, who's just, you know, throwing stones up as best she can to block. She gets one in the shoulder, now she's just, yeah! uh, and now she's just uh, raising help, basically just blows the building apart at this point, just boom, with just exploding the ground underneath. Uh, Urza and her just, you know, standing off now. Urza decides to go to more or less the adamantine armor for a heart of defense, and Nahiri just can't pierce that armor. Then she's finally getting ready to do the final blow using the uh, grand armor. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Celestial armor? Yeah, I think it's celestial armor. And, you know, bringing star, the energy of the stars down upon Nahiri. Nahiri, in a last-ditch effort, bring, just throws a mountain up, which does catch her feet, which is... Well, more than, which is, which surprised her. And then she grabs her feet with a stone and brings the, as she's bringing the attack down on Nahiri, and she basically just pulls her right into the blast along with her. And they both get, basically just blasted with this energy. Boom! And basically, they're both on the ground. They're both struggling to get up. Nahiri more so because, um, 
Urza at least has the armor to give her some protection. And here he does that. They're just standing up. Uh, and he's like, you uh, uh, And then finally, uh, Urza's like, he's like, this is over. And then she again realizes that she can't move. He's like, you're right, it is. And then just, boom, pulls her down completely into the ground and just kind of does like a Garo Sankov technique. Just, just crushes her. And to be fair, she still has armor on, so I imagine it doesn't crush the armor part, but the problem is there's parts of her body, like her head, that is covered in armor. So, and the armor maybe like crinkles under the pressure a bit, but it's her body still attack, but the parts that are, are not ex are, uh, exposed, like bits of her arm, her leg, just, she just crushes her. Nahiri then basically limps and planes walks away. And Nahiri gets, Nahiri's gonna win this fight. Why does Nahiri win this fight? But it's a close fight. Honestly, this is a really... This is, I'm going to say it right now. It's like 55-45, honestly. It's not that close. I mean, not that far apart. But why do I give Nahiri the slight edge over Urza? Well, the reason for that is pretty simple in my mind. Is that... Well, it's not super simple. There's things that both have over the other. In terms of actual wide variety and arsenal, uh, um, Urza's got that completely uh, over her. I mean... In terms of sh uh, uh, in terms of just overall how much she has at her disposal to use, it's um um uh, it gives his head uh, wow sorry I got NCIS on um Urza has divert theoretically diversity a lot to throw at Nahiri better overall quality of skill better um uh, better combat experience uh, better combat or uh, hand to hand skills. And um, is it just a bit of a colder individual? Nahiri is a bit more volatile, but when Nahiri has over uh, Urza is very important. She has experience first and foremost. She's just been around longer and has dealt with more individuals and knows how to deal with more individuals easier than Urza does. Uh, she also isn't. She's also at least I would imagine skilled enough to hold her own in a straight fight with her, at least with a sword. But it's the fact that she's not a sword mage or someone like uh, Urza in that sense. But a lithomancer, the fact that she can create, do whatever really she wants with stone is really the big deciding factor in it. It gives her a lot of defense, at least from a lot of her weaker uh, weaponry, and it gives her a lot of uh, weird offensive capability. Particularly the ability to seal someone in stone and basically cease their movements is is a big one. It, it's the, it's the, that's the big uh, thing to take away from that is that, she, and she has enough combat skill and experience on her own right that um, um, she would easily be able to catch someone in the in the, some stone and uh, you know seal them up and more than likely is capable of doing a kind of you know crushing thing in the stone. So I do have to go into here, but it's a close ass fight. It's good. I go 55 45. But let me know if you think it's closer, farther, or I think Urza is going to take the win. I get the feeling a lot of you're probably going to say who actually know these characters are going to say Urza is going to win. Look, it's your opinion. That's fine. This just happens to be my opinion. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. I did see if it would win. Stars, rare magic, what if, anything I can do on the channel. Put that in the comments below. Let me know. I'll get to that at some point. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.